everybody welcome to yet another video so today we're having a look at the ANI R160 now this is in a 1.2 tip and we're putting that up against the ANI compact which in this case has a 1.3 tip so it's a, a small difference of, of 0.1 of a millimeter in difference in the tips but it actually has quite an effect on the actual spraying of the gun. Now, I don't think the caps have changed at all. There's two videos I did before this one uh, with the compact. So I'll put a link in the description. One's an unboxing where we go through the differences between these guns, which is, is very little. Uh, it's more or less the tip and the uh, tip needle and cap. Um, in fact, it's not even the cap, because if you buy one of the sets, they do the compact in a set where you get a 1.3 tip set and you also get a 1.0 tip set. Um, and people have told me you only get one cap. So the cap, you know, it, it stands to reason that the cap must actually be the same, although the markings are different. And that happens a lot with a lot of manufacturers. They'll put different markings on something, although it is actually the same thing. But the tip definitely is different in that the diameter is, is obviously different. Um, so I did this video basically to, well, satisfy me uh, for those that are new to the channel, I'll just quickly run through it, and apologies to people that, that watch the channel. Um, I normally do motorcycle stuff, but I've got a couple of panels that I keep uh, to, to do exactly this, to, to try out um, something against the other. So everything is the same. The clear coat is, is the same, in which case it's a, uh, sorry, in this case, it's a U-Pole 2080 clear coat. Um, but everything's the same. So the conditions are the same I, as in temperature. The painter's frame of mind is the same. Everything is the same except for the gun. Uh, so it, it gives us an idea. I think it gives us more of an idea of, of what the differences are. Um, when I first got this gun, this the compact, um, again, those that watch the channel uh, you know, sorry for going over things over and over again if you watch the channel regularly, but I, I appreciate quite a few new people come on board and, and watch these videos. Um, I sound like a captain of a ship, don't I, coming on board? Anyway, uh, quite a few people watch these, you know, new people watch these videos, so it's worth going over these things sometimes. So people will know that I already, already champion the ANI R160. Uh, I've got it in 1.2 and I've got it in 1.0. I used to have it in 0 0.8 and 0 0.5 as well. They they do um, some smaller tip versions. But I will, I've i always found that the 0 0.8 and 0 0.5, it doesn't really work properly on this gun. Um, by that, I don't mean that it does anything wrong, but... I've always found that with, with this gun, particularly for clear coat, as we're, we're using here, you need a fair bit of pressure. Uh, and I find that if you're using a 0 0.5 or a 0 0.8, you don't want loads of air flying all over the place because what you're doing is normally a bit more intricate. Um, so, yeah, I think these work in 1.0 point, 1 point and upwards far better than they do in the um, smaller sizes. Uh, you'll see me using a microwave. Again, apologies for people who watch the channel regularly. Uh, but I will put a disclaimer in here that you, you shouldn't really do this, but it is what I do. I do 10 seconds per 100 millilitres. Obviously, depends on ambient temperature, but I find that works absolutely fine. Helps the clear coat run out better. And I'll put a link in the description to a video I did quite a while ago now, about four years ago now. But it shows you the effect that warming the clear has on the clear coat in that how much it actually changes the viscosity makes it much makes it flow much much better plus obviously you get the increase of uh in in the warmth because the material is warmer uh, it helps it go off faster which helps you avoid uh, dust nibs and things like that uh anyway going back to what we were saying reader tip sizes the 1.0 1.2 i do 1.3 now and the 1.4 so the 1.3 and the 1.4 I, I originally rung spray guns well long story short but i i i commented on social media anyway and they uh, answered my comment 
and I, I rung them up and we went through a few things. Um, I will say that they actually sent me this 1.3 tip set free of charge. Uh, I did buy the compact gun and I bought it at normal cost with a 1.4 tip in it. But they did supply very kindly um, a 1.3 tip set, which is the tip set I'm using. I'm using here. So uh, yeah, thanks to them for that. And I, you know, I need to uh, let you know that that was supplied free of charge. But yeah, I think these guns work very well in the tip sizes, you know, one millimeter and and over. Uh, one of the things I will say about these guns is if you see some of the promotional material, I feel they need more air than uh, is often quoted. Yes, you will get away with 4, four uh, CFM, 4.5 CFM, but it'll only give you about 2 bar of pressure. Now, I've found that these things use about, or need, about 2 point, depending what base coat it is, but about 2.5 bar, which is about 31 PSI for base coat but i like to have these at about three point well anywhere between three and 3.5 bar mm -hmm. for clear coat and that's what i'm using here 3.5 bar which is about or oh, what is that about 49 psi something like that and they work like little gems at that sort of um uh, that sort of pressure but the air consumption again i'll try and remember to put a link the description will be full of links I'll try and remember to put a link um, in the video, in the uh, description about um, a, 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 a test I did on mini, air, mini, mini spray guns and their air consumption. So I'll try and remember to put a link in the description uh, for that so that you can see where this gun comes out. It's not excessive, it doesn't use loads of air, but I reckon it probably needs about 6 CFM for clear coats and you'll get away with probably five cfm for base coats uh, but bear in mind that this actually these these guns here in 1.2 and 1.3 actually put out a fair bit of material uh, i mean they're not full-size guns but they definitely they definitely work very well for a mini and will cover bigger areas um, than a lot of mini guns something like the lph 80 or something you know, it takes a long, long time to do an area that this will. So although you're actually using more air, because you're completing your task in a quicker time, you know, if you've got two panels to do or three panels to do, um, as long as you've got a little bit of a supply in your compressor, even if you've got a small compressor, you'll probably get away with it. Um, you can see here the 1.2, as I said before at the start of the video, I've always championed this little gun. Uh, works supremely well i'll put a link in the description to um spray guns direct uh where you can get the spray gun get these guns from and i'll also put a link to the in the description to the various tip sets you can get to convert this because if you're going to buy a compact it is the same gun as the r150 just with a different setup you get a bigger cut with it um and it's just just a little bit more really of everything but the actual gun body etc is the same so if you buy it with a uh, a 1.3 and you want to change it to a 1.0 then you just buy the tip set which is uh basically a needle a tip and a cap so looking at the difference between the two you'll see the spray out in a second uh when we do the spray out of the 1.3 i leave all the mixing bits and that in because quite a few people i used to i used to miss them out and quite a few people asked me to leave the like in between bits in um so a lot of you will see that i have started using just normal paper coffee cups now they're not wax coated so make sure you don't get ones that wax coated but they're ideal for smaller amounts of paint and they're literally a third of the price of a mixing cup that's designed for paint. I used to paint, I used to paint, I used to get 600 milliliter cups and I used to buy them a thousand at a time and I used to pay about 65 GB pounds for them. Uh, and that was paper. I, I used to use plastic, but I'm trying to cut down on plastic. Odd as it seems, I think it's, if I can cut down on plastic, I can. Uh, so I went over to paper. That was about two and a half years ago. 
Um, and the next lot I ordered, I went, I went to order, um, and it had gone up to about £74, so I bought those. Come the next lot I went to order, about £124 GB pounds for a 1,000 a cups. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll try a coffee cup. They were about, I think, 40 GB pounds for a 1,000. So I got the coffee cups, and I tried them, put paint in them, left the paint in there for three, four days, see what happens. Uh, and it was no different whatsoever to the proper paint cups. So I got two sizes of coffee cup. One's about four GB pounds more for a per thousand than the smaller ones. But one holds about 225 millilitres, and the other one holds about 340 millilitres of... Um, you know, paint or clear or whatever you want. So they're absolutely ideal for a lot of the things I do. So that's what I've been using. I've just been using normal paper cups, and I just measure. I just measure out the paint in weight, uh, which you would normally do for paint anyway. But for clear coat as well, most of the clears I use, you just weigh yourself out a uh, hundred millilitres and, and get to know how much it actually weighs. But a lot of the TDS sheets. Uh, will actually show you all, um, how to, you know how to mix by weight rather than volume, but most of it is is virtually even Stephen. You know the clear weighs as much as the uh, hardener, so it's quite easy to do. And you'll see me here measuring it out. But I mentioned that because quite a few people have asked me about the cups, uh, and they are literally just standard coffee cups. You'd need to buy some and try them. I've had absolutely no problems whatsoever with contamination. Um, I've left stuff in there for like two weeks. It hasn't leaked or anything. You know, there's been no um, reaction with the solvent and the um, the glue they use for the cup. So, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, I've saved myself quite a lot of money by doing it this way for the sort of quantities I use anyway. Obviously, if you use PPS uh, cups, then none of this will really apply. Um but I, I tend again not to use PPS cups. Um, I just I'd find it quite convenient to use a, a normal cup. I've got lots of different sizes, so I just find that more convenient. Anyway, sorry for rubbing on, but back to the guns. So with these guns, you'll notice in a second when I do the spray out with the one point three, um, it, it's a marked difference between the one point three and the one point two. Uh, and what I was going back to before, when I originally rung Spray Guns Direct, I was a little bit sceptical after contacting them on a social media. Uh, I was a little bit sceptical about um, the claims that th this sort of made that much difference. You know, you think 0.1 of a millimetre, can it really make that much difference? Uh, and the answer to the question is it actually does. It does make a fair bit of difference. Uh, I've got the 1.4 set up as well, um, and that's just a little bit more of the same. One of the things they were saying is that the that they find that the pattern doesn't quite hold together as well on the 1.4. I didn't find that, but it, it will depend on the viscosity of the material you're using, uh, and it will it will also depend on obviously the pressure you're using the gun at. Um, but I used it, uh, I used a 1.4 at 3.5 bar, so nearly 50 PSI um, for clear coat, and I got a stunning finish with it. Um, and it, it, the pattern was absolutely fine, but it's a high solids clear coat. If you have a medium solids one, you might find that the pattern will split. But if it does, then you can bring the pressure down a little bit. Uh, hopefully you can keep your finish. The reason for using a higher pressure, I find, on clear coat with this is it, it does it does atomize finer. Uh, I, I tried using these at 2 bar. There's a chap I know, uh, hello John if you're watching, who um, has an Instagram page. Uh, again, I'll try and remember to put a link in the description, but... Um, He's a good, he's a good chap. He 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 knows what he's doing with clear coat, um, and he does lots of experiment with different clear coats and adding thinners and not adding thinners and, and different things like that. So it's, it's worth having a look at what he does. But he used to uh, one of the guns he first got was an A and I R one sixty. I think it's R one sixty or R one fifty. But an R150 is just a, a, the older version of the R160. Um, 
and he was using it, and, and he wasn't getting particularly good finishes. Um, and I said to him, just bump the pressure up and see what happens. And he bumped the pressure up, and uh, as far as I know, he'll probably uh, leave a comment in the video, so you'll be able to see what he thinks. But it definitely did the trick for him, I think. And it, it really does need that extra pressure, and that's what gives it that extra consumption um, above what... Um, what is often quoted for this gun but otherwise you know this thing this thing hasn't changed from the r160 that it used to be it used to be a brilliant gun all this has done is given it a a new not not a new lease of life because the old one wasn't at the end of its life it's given it a um a new avenue a new avenue yeah some something that uh you know you could do you can do more with this so if you were thinking, I've got two panels to do, I'll get the R160 out. If you were thinking, I've got the whole side to do, uh, the R160 won't cut it. Well, the R1, well, the, the compact, A&I compact, will cut it. Uh, because it does put out that much more material, speed the gun up by a fair bit, you get a nice big fan with it. And one of the reasons for using the same... Um, a wing in this case, a fender, I think you say in the US, is that you can see, just watch the two, watch the final coat, because that's more of the, you know, the finished coat, uh, and see which one's faster. And you'll see that the 1.3 is a fair bit faster. Uh, and that's where, you, that's where you gain. So it enables you to do the side of a car much, much more easier. And of course, with the compact, you get a, a bigger cup. So you get a, I think it's 500 milliliter they give you with it, rather than 600 milliliter. Um, but you get a bigger cup with it as standard anyway. So actually in that kit, you get a smaller cup as well. You get the 250 milliliter, which is what the R150 normally comes with. I've also got a 100 milliliter, which they do do as a spare cup. Um, but I got that with the um, little GF3 because that comes with a uh, 100 milliliter little cup, uh, which is a really good cheap gun. The ANI GF3. If ever, if ever you uh, just look up my YouTube channel and you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, I've, I've used that quite a bit. I've I've drilled one out to make it into a primer gun uh, for high build primer. I drilled it out to 1.8. Uh, cracking little tool really cheap you can get spares kits for it and everything so yeah um, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy that little gun although the pattern's a bit crooked uh, but it doesn't it doesn't make any di it's it's nice and even so it doesn't actually make any difference to uh, the work but there you can see um, it's dried out a bit so you can see how much more material the length of trigger pull was the same the distance from the uh, work was exactly the same. You can't really split these two on performance, which for the compact is good because it means that you're not actually losing anything compared to the R160 uh, for that extra speed. So, yeah, it, thoroughly recommended. Really good gun. Hasn't really changed. The only thing I will say is that they're getting a bit more expensive now, about 120 GB pounds. That's including the UK tax. Um, and there's, there's starting to be a few of the Chinese guns and things like that that are coming through that are knocking on the door of these. Um, certainly performance-wise, they're e equaling them. Although you won't get, as in the case with these, you won't get a spares kit for £10. Um, you know, most of the things that wear on these guns, uh, you and that's a video I've got to do because a few people have asked me to do that um, to fit a spare kit, spares kit to one of these. But you know, the, these aren't a throwaway gun, whereas sometimes the Chinese stuff can be. Uh, these these will actually last, and as I say, you can get a scare, spares kit, not particularly expensive, um, and you're up and running again. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and you keep watching them and I'll keep making them. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe think about give us a, a thumbs up and uh, a subscription. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.